One of the things that the president, Nigeria's president, raised in, at the G20 is the need for world leaders to start helping countries in need, developing countries and all of that. Now that boils down to, oh, we went to G20 not to say, oh, this is who we are, this is what we are bringing to the table. If we are looking at building our economy, this is where we are security-wide, this is where we are economy-wide in terms of, in terms of inter international exports, this is the trade we can have with India and other parts of the world. But there's still need for us, we are still presenting ourselves as we are needy, please come to our aid. How much of this do you think we really need to jettison as a people if we're going to be looking at becoming a producing economy? But for one, we didn't go to the G. 20. 20 cap in hand. We were invited in observer capacity. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was a necessary first step was what was to come. Because at the end of that um, summit, uh, Africa as a block was admitted into the G20, yeah. which is a, a big plus. We're talking about Nigeria. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, Nigeria is part of Africa. Nigeria is like the leading economy in Africa in terms of size. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. it's not it's not mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not a wasteful journey especially no, again no, i'm not saying it's wasteful no, I, I mean, I'm, no I'm, not saying it's, perception. Yeah, I'm not i'm not saying you're saying mm -hmm. it's a wasteful journey i mean there's no there's no nation that's an island unto itself nations interact with other nations and um I think it's even a better, it, this is even a fairer approach than used to be the case. We didn't go to the G20 to ask for aid. We went to the G20 to seek strategic partnership. The president went there with some business leaders, Tony Lumelu, uh, Aliko Dangote, and a couple of others. And so they reached out to the business economy in India. And then I, I they even got investment running into billions of dollars. Promissory notes are great, but one would expect that. I mean, in the Nigerian market is a big market. Ask any of the conglomerates, global conglomerates who've done business but that's here. But the fact. Who've done business here. So, so if, and then there are, I mean, India also has its own fair share of billionaires. So mm -hmm. if they can invest a little, a little fraction of that in our own economy, it will go a long way to creating jobs. And all told, I think it's also a good thing we've been admitted to G20 now. Uh, I can't, the, 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 benefits, the benefits are such that we can't even exhaust them if we begin to list them here. The fact that we are cooperating with the 20 leading economies in the world, I'm sure there will be, it will provide a platform for greater cooperation, for greater trade, which I think is even a better thing than, you know, going there to ask for aid. And it's a good thing we didn't go there to ask for aid when they are seeking investments. Yeah, seeking we're seeking investments. He did all of that, you know, but the promise we note and then its impact to our economy. But asking for one of the things he asked for was for them to begin to look at investing in third world countries, for instance. But there is a challenge with that. The perception is this. Oh, they, we are always going, like, asking for something. What are we bringing to the table? Yes, you talked about Ilumelu being there, talked about Dan Gote being there and all of that. Remember, these are private businessmen at the end of the day. Of course, there are investors in Nigeria, no doubt about that. But what we as a people, what is it that we're bringing to the table? I'll give you a typical example. What are we security-wise? What are, what are we in terms of a, a power generation-wise, for instance? How is, what, is that, what are the ease of doing business in Nigeria that we can say, okay, this is what we are putting out there and not expecting because we're a third world country, things should be done for us in terms of being key players in world economy? That's a legitimate concern, really. I mean, we are, we are confronted in this country by a massive, almost crippling uh, uh, infrastructure deficit whether you talk about roads, whether you talk about power, whether you talk about security, and these are the critical infrastructure that support business. So, and then even the regulatory environment in some places, I mean, there are instances of over taxation, double taxation, sometimes yeah. your tax at the state level, your tax at the federal government, and then these taxes are supposed to be doing the same thing when you look at it. So those are issues that should be matters of concern for those who are going out to call these investors. Of course, the investors themselves won't just come and yeah. put their money in your economy because You've come there fully dressed in three-piece suits and, and, you know, flowing robes. They'll also do their own checks to see if this is the right place for them to do business. So, but I think it's a good thing that we are making the call. For me, I think the most important thing here is that there's, it seems to me that we've recalibrated our approach. Mm -hmm. Before this time, we'll go there to ask for aid. But now we're not going to ask for aid. We're asking for investment. Come and invest in our economies. Come and do business with us. Trade okay. in, instead of aid. I think for me, that, that change in approach... It's something that should, should signpost the beginning of, you know, 
a, 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 a new, new venture, a new economy. phase, really, of our interaction with the rest of the world. All right. Now, uh, the African Union also is now a Afri African Union, basically, now is a permanent member of the G20. But how much of this permanency that we now occupy at the G20 is going to improve the lot of Africa? In terms of security, again, in terms of democratic dividends, with the number of coups going on right now, all pointing at all um, corruption among democratic leaders and what have you. Well, I don't see this contributing much in terms of democratic consolidation. The G20 is not a political organization. It's no, I'm just saying economic. generally, yeah, because sorry, these are the issues in Africa right exactly. now. Exactly. It's more of an economic organization. Mm -hmm. and as you know, some of those who do business in Africa, some I mean, those whom African leaders even like to relate with are those who don't bother about issues of human rights. They are simply there to... And the Chinese, for example, mm -hmm. the Americans will come there and then begin to, quote-unquote, quote poke their noses into your internal affairs, tell you about, you know, democracy and human rights and, and all the press freedom and all that. The Chinese come there, are simply interested in investing and they are not concerned about those are the ones that African leaders are more interested in. So, like I said, the G20 is more of an economic organization than a political one. So I don't see this as some of those so, things that will consolidate democracy. Okay, so consider. But, do you, but do you think that there is need for Africa, yes, occupying the posi permanent position in G20, awesome, great, but do you think this should now be a wake-up call for them to look inwards and begin to fix there are issues within the African uh, sub-region to ensure that, or the African continent as a matter of, to ensure that it's not enough to occupy this position, but you need to begin to bring quality value to the table. We don't even need the G20 to give us a permanent seat for us to see. I mean, it's been long overdue for us to sit down as a continent and then begin to look in what and see what we can do about our situation. It's, it's, it's embarrassing that the continent has, you know, blessed in terms of natural resources of Africa is should be the poorest continent in the world. Mm -hmm. We should think about adding value to some of these resources. It's not just enough to, to, to ship out cocoa. Why don't you convert your cocoa to something more valuable? I mean, you export cocoa and then you, 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 you import cocoa powder. I mean, that, that, that doesn't make any economic sense. Basic economics will tell you that that is... <laughs> but that's, that is, that even with our crude, that's the same thing Yeah, exactly. We do. So, I mean, I'm just using cocoa <laughs> as an example because I'm taking crude for granted. I mean, that, that, that is sufficiently embarrassing, the, yeah. the, the crude situation. So, it's important that for us as Africans, we need to sit down and then begin to look at the way we've engaged with the world. I mean, right. we, we should as much as possible. And then we think of personnel too, human resources. We need to build our people. We need to build our people. And then we also need to spread the benefits of some of these resources. The, the, the rate of poverty, the gap between the haves and the have nots in Africa is really, really embarrassing. And it seems to be widening as they go. Oh, yeah. And then we also need to tackle matters of corruption. We really need to. All right.